Father God, I thank you, Lord, today. I give you praise. Lord, I need your help to get this started today. I need your help to have as we get ready to go on with this. And Lord, may all of this be in your spirit. Lord, I need your help, your anointing to, to do this. And Lord, we're going to rattle some cages today, and I'm hoping. So here we go, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. What are we going to start talking about? Oh, I've told you about it. I've told you several times we're going to start this. We're going to start talking about healing. Okay? We're going to do a whole series on this thing. What's that all entail? It just goes nuts. We're going to talk about bringing in the kingdom. So here's the issue. You're saved. That's a good thing. That's the basic understanding of everything. That's Everything boils, boils right from that. Now, as I look across the room, I don't see anybody that I would question their salvation at this point. Say, and you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And at least you've been given the opportunity on a regular and continual basis to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you are not, we can take care of that today. That's not a big problem. You are being filled by the Spirit. Now, how far are you along? Well, that's just a whole nother discussion we've been having for the last few weeks. How's this working? Oh, that's pretty cool. And we've also been finding out that you are anointed. Now, we also found out that the anointing can go the other direction. We can have some real interesting problems. But you are saved Baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Spirit and anointed. That's awesome. Boy, I hope you're getting the understanding. You're there. You have been given more than you know what to do with, and that's the problem. What's the purpose? For what purpose? Is God doing this just so you can have your series of, of Eagle Scout badges across your sash? Are you an eagle yet? Well, you are doing pretty well. You're actually doing just downright awesome. You have everything from God. <laughs> now it's time to give it away. Here we go. Now, Matthew 10, 5 through 8 says this. Jesus sent these 12 out. He had his 12 disciples. One of them, by the way, was Judas. Just want to make sure you know charging them, saying, Do not go into the way of the nations. Do not go into a Samaritan city, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And going on, proclaim, saying... He's sending the disciples out. So what is it he's saying? The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Now, you remember all that we'd stated about the kingdom? Okay, now we're, we're talking. We're still talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Now, what did he say to Nicodemus? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is within hand's reach, within arm's grasp, right? It's right here. It's something that can be touched with your hand. It's right here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It has come near. Now, until you understand how the kingdom of heaven functions, you're not going to know it's near. Okay? How do we know it's near? kingdom has come to you functionally. Now, Jesus has just said to them, the kingdom of heaven has come to you functionally. He says, then he tells them, prove it. Prove it. What do he do? Oh, heal the sick ones, cleanse the lepers, raise dead ones, cast out demons. Here is the big issue. The big issue is you freely received, now Freely give. What do you have? Well, you got it all. Now, did you get that all for you to use? No, of course you can use it. It is to affect your life, right? However, it's more than just something for you to use, isn't it? Now comes the putting the rubber on the road. Okay? Here's the way it works. Jesus said to declare. Now, this is the big deal. You got to declare it. The issue is in other people's lives, you actually have to tell people what's available. 
No, he says, I want you to go out there and tell them the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, he started it, usually he had them say one thing first, and that was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven has come to you. Now, this is, this is where it gets really tricky, okay? I'm now near Linda. Makes her a little nervous. It's all good. <laughs> I'm near to Linda. What does that mean? That if there's any interaction that's going to happen, it's going to happen right here because I'm near. It's different than when I'm standing over there, huh? Yeah, very different. This is a whole lot different. What are you going to do kind of different, okay? Ah, uh, nervous. <laughs> Okay, because the kingdom of Lee has just come near. See, ah, she say he backed off. He didn't do anything. It's all good. <laughs> now the kingdom of heaven is near. What good is it to tell somebody the kingdom of heaven is near if you can't bring the kingdom of heaven to what they're doing? The kingdom of heaven is now near. Now who's speaking this? The disciples, the people who the kingdom of heaven has been implanted and given to them, saying, now you've been freely given it, now freely give it away. The kingdom of heaven is now near. Now, here's, here's where it gets very interesting, okay? Okay, Brandon, come here. Yeah, did you see the look on his face? You didn't see it. He just went, oh, God, here we go again. Okay, let me just stand right here. Okay. Closer. The kingdom of Brandon is now involved in the bubble of Miranda. <laughs> Miranda's bubble has been invaded. Now, if he looks at this running dog heathen named Miranda and says, the kingdom of heaven is here, she's got to be able to know that all of the kingdom of heaven that is available can come through him to her. So if you're going to say the words, the kingdom of heaven is near, you'd better be able to deliver. Amen. Yep. Okay? Now, here's where we all get into fear. You may sit down. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you. And she's saying awesome thanks too. Okay, my bubble, my bubble's back. Okay. Declare is not enough, but declare is something we haven't done much of. How much have you gone into people's lives and declared, declared that I'm bringing everything that heaven has right here? Okay? If you have friends that you've never declared that to, then you are not much of a friend. That is true. Number two, it's not enough to declare. You have to actually demonstrate. Prove to them that it is real and functional. What good is it for me to walk up to you and tell you the kingdom of heaven is in me and, and that's it? I mean, that's, and you're going to say, so? Bring it. Prove it. Show me. Do something in my life. Now, we know that we're temples, right? We are temples of the Holy Spirit. People are supposed to be able to come to us and meet with God. Well, that means that everything God has must be available through us. Am I making sense? Okay. You ready for the third D? Is to disciple. It's not enough to do it. You've got to teach others how to do it. Declare, demonstrate, and disciple. Declare, demonstrate, and disciple. Now, am I making sense? Romans 10, 17 says, Then faith is of hearing, and hearing through the... Which word for word? Oh, so busted. Oh, of course it's Rhema. Faith is of hearing and hearing through the specific spoken. It isn't that you have all faith of everything that the word has to say, the whole logos, but only what is spoken to you gives you faith. You can't have faith on something that you haven't had a specific spoken. If Jesus hasn't spoken it to you, where's your faith on it? It's only knowledge at that point. It's got to be specific spoken. So that means that we have to have that specific spoken word from God. We can't be working with somebody else's theology. You can't go healing people because I said so. Praise God. Have you heard it from Jesus personally? Now, here's where we start getting into some real interesting issues. 
Because all sorts of theology is running around through your head, but how much of it has been spoken to you by Jesus himself? Isn't that what the relationship is about? If you don't have the specific spoken, you can't work it because faith only comes by hearing the specific spoken word of God. The rhema to you is what's going to make the difference. Are you convinced that healing is of God? Are you convinced because somebody preached it? Or are you convinced because you've actually heard it? There's the difference. Who, who is supposed to receive it? You're going to have to ask these questions because this is the reality of it. What do you have within you? Well, let's see, you have the Holy Spirit within you. In John, it says that when the Father gives the Holy Spirit, He gives it without measure. So you have everything that God could possibly give anybody. You have the Holy Spirit. You're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You are anointed, and you are in the process of filling. What else do you need? Where is God going to go to get more for you? Kmart, blue light special? personal revelation is this coming to you or is it also for others now here's the problem because I can go across the line in this room and I bet you I can find people who have not been healed and who have even asked for prayer okay so wait a minute what's the deal okay what's the deal why weren't you healed what's going on with that what's the problem here Okay, that's exactly the problem that everybody gets into. How can I go to healing others when I have headaches? How can I go out with somebody else when my knees don't work? How can I lay hands on somebody for their headache when I've got cancer and cancer is way bigger than headaches? Come on, people. You understand this is all bogus. Can you get this stuff personally for you? Yes. But if you haven't, does that mean you can't give it to somebody else? No. no. You've got to understand that this stuff is all here. We've got to find out why. There's only one person who can answer the question why, and why is usually not the right question to ask anyway. It's got to come from him. The issue is, why aren't you healed? Well, don't ask me. Ask Jesus. But I'm not hearing anything. Therein lies a whole other issue. Therein lies a whole other issue. Here's the problem. Let's just state the problem right from the get-go. Oh, I got several of them. I should, should put the, the problems. Okay? Here's the problem. I've tried it once, and it didn't work. I tried laying hands on somebody, and they didn't work. The first person I ever laid hands on for healing died. That's my real story. Oh, I've done better since, Okay? <laughs> It freaked me out because I was just hitting the scriptures and I hit that scripture that we're going to be hitting several times. It says that anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing, Jesus said. John chapter 12. What had he been doing? Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, doing miracles, teach, preaching the gospel to the poor, and there's another one. I had six. Anyway, it's still, so I, I said, going, well, if I have faith in Jesus, then I'm going to have to go out and heal the sick. I was a youth pastor at the time, and one of the kids in my youth group came in and said, my dad has hepatitis B, or, yeah, or C. Anyway, it was really rare at the time, and nobody knew how to treat it. And he was in the hospital, and he was dying. I said, okay. So I studied what the Word of God said, and I said, because the Bible says, anybody has faith in me will do what I've been doing. And so I went out to... Lay hands on him and heal him. I studied. I found out that you can anoint them with oil. And I took the word and I went right through the Strong's Concordance and looked at what that word meant. And it didn't mean to touch a little bit on their forehead. It meant to dump it. So I walked into his hotel room, or the hotel room, right. His uh, hospital room. Started with an H. It was close. A little bit more expensive, though. Walked into his hotel room and I talked to the head nurse on the floor because it was a guy I knew. Okay? And I went, I've got to do this, man. He says, you got it. Take it in. Go for it. Okay. So I went in. And I says, hello, Mr. Hansen. My name is Lee Eddy. I'd met him before. Do you remember me? Yeah. I'm here to tell you that God has healing for things. And I want to lay hands on you and pray for you and anoint you with oil for your healing. He says, go for it. 
He had run away from the church because he had seen so much damage in the church happen. He had been part of their church council and they had so misused everything and done things unscripturally and so messed with that he said, I, if I'm, I'm never going to step in another church again. And here he was dying. Does that mean he didn't believe in God anymore? Well, we don't know. We just know that he, now he's saying, okay, I'm in a bad position. Whatever you want to do, go for. So I had, praise God, it wasn't like a gallon. But I had a little bottle, and I dumped the entire thing on this guy's head in the hospital room. I laid hands on him. We prayed. I did everything I knew what to do, and then I'm just standing there looking at him, and my hands are all oily, and he's looking at me, and his whole everything is all oily, and, and we don't know what else to say. I'm done. I've done everything. I've, I says, so, well, God bless you. And he says, okay. And so I grabbed some towels and wiped up my hands and walked out. I had no other idea what to do. We asked that same head nurse, can we set a chair right here and do a prayer vigil for him? And he said, sure, go for it. And we prayed for that man 24-7 until he died now what's that do for your faith man I was devastated I had to do his funeral and everybody's looking at me going I thought you know all the whole youth group I thought we did all the people that were sat out there and did hours of prayer vigil outside his room and they're all looking at me like what happened I didn't have answers for him until I heard the story that his son we were, <laughs> always gets me, was sitting outside his room doing the night vigil. And he came to the Lord and said, Lord, I've messed it all up. It isn't religion, is it? And he heard, his, his son heard his dad have a conversation with Jesus Christ. And he came to Jesus that night. And he died that morning. Why? Because was he healed physically? I think he was. But he had a healing that was deeper than anything we could ever imagine because he came to the Lord and he was healed for eternity. And Jesus said, finally, I got you in the family. Let's go home, okay? And they took him home. Was he healed? Absolutely. And you'll never convince me of anything else. Physically, didn't matter at the point. What was important did happen. Because people who had a walk with Jesus walked into this man's life and proved their Christianity by sitting there and praying for him and praying for him and praying for him. And he finally met Jesus through that. So the first person I ever prayed for died. Praise God. So, you tried it. Didn't work. Are you ready to give up? Oh, man, there's so much more. Are you determined enough to seek answers? Lord, they died. Now what? Or, Lord, they're not well. I laid hands on them, and their hip still hurts. Lord, I laid hands on them. They're still in pain. I anointed him with oil and it didn't work. What's going on? Are you ready to give up? Or are you ready to seek answers? Find out what's going on. Because trust isn't about your understanding. God does not need your understanding to have your obedience. See, there's so much more involved in what we're doing than just it didn't work. See, that we're not playing games here. This isn't, this isn't just some little tool you get from Kmart or something and just blow it on and say, hey, it's all done, right? Man, we are much more complex people than that. It's going to take some stuff to thinking about what's going to happen. How about this problem? Well, I'm not trained enough. I'm not trained enough. No, nobody is. There's absolutely nobody on the planet that is. John Wimber who I was under his ministry when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, went under him and what he said, okay? He said that the people that he prayed for and laid hands for 
laid the hand. 77% of them got healed. 77%. People looked at him and said, what about the other 23%? He says, you're not listening. 77%. Almost everybody took it into the negative. Oh, let's take this to the positive. How many percentage of the people you're laying hands on are being healed? Is that interesting or what? Okay, the, what's the issue here? The issue is, even John Wimber didn't know enough, and he was doing all his training. Was he trained enough? No, he's still a student of the Word. He's still a student of how Jesus was doing stuff. He was still studying to find out what God wanted him to do. Not trained enough? Obedience isn't about time in grade. Obedience is about obedience. You're going to do it or not do it. You're going to do what God tells you to do or you're not going to do what God tells you to do. It's all about obedience. It has nothing to do with how much training. But here's one thing I'll tell you for sure. This is something we're going to take away that issue about. We're going to train us. We're going to work on some training. We're going to find out some things that you need to do and how it works and why. It's about time that we took this to their, to their realm, out into their world. We should be able to see healings at the post office. St. Arbucks. We've got to know. Partially trained is better than just disobedient. Nobody trained me at the beginning. I had to go through and find all sorts of different stuff. Now, what has happened? Have people been healed under my hand since? Yes. How was the percentage? I don't think it's a high percentage. Not yet. But I'll tell you, man, it is so cool to watch somebody be changed. How about this problem? Well, don't give me the big ones. Okay? I'll pray for, I'll pray for little problems. Don't give me the big ones. Well, I'm sorry, but there's no difference between cancer and zits. What's it going to be? What, you can't heal a headache. But Jesus can heal everything. So what's the difference? Okay, folks, this is it. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It doesn't matter what it is you're fighting. Everything comes under the power that the heavenly kingdom has. It doesn't matter from there on. Big ones should just bring compassion. When I hear somebody say, I've got cancer, my heart goes out to them because, man, they're in for a ride if something doesn't happen pretty, pretty quick. Man, I've got diabetes. I still, to this day, I hate diabetes. I am still looking for the root on that emotionally, find out what the cause is. I hate diabetes. Anybody in, agree with that? Hate that thing. I hate all sorts of wonderful little things, but I'm telling you something. The big one should just bring compassion, not freak us out. What is Jesus saying about it? It has nothing to do with how big the, the disease is. What is Jesus saying about it? We should be able to flow, flow there. How about the problem of nothing's happening? I laid hands on them, nothing is happening. You hear the little panic happening, nothing's happening. Well, maybe we need to look for the root. If nothing else, we understand that 87 to 95% of the diseases are based in the emotions, not based in their body. If nothing else, we should be the people on the face of the planet to see more healings than anybody because we are also willing to find the root cause. We should have a higher percentage of healing than any other church anywhere. Why? Because we're looking for the, the, the root. We know how to look for the root. 87% diseases are not based in the body. They're based in the emotions, in their past, in their soul. It's a soulish problem, not a physical one. How about just listening to Jesus? He knows exactly why. He knows where the root is. He knows what the problem is. Is it just physical? If so, then we can lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, do with all whatever it is that the Lord is telling us to do at the time, spit on the ground and make a new eyeball for them. I don't care what it is. We're going to have to learn to listen to the voice of Jesus. Amen. That's the point. It's your walk that's important. You see, now what happens if the person doesn't have enough faith? I'm going to tell you two of the worst scenarios that I've ever heard. One ministry that I know of condemns the person, if they're not healed, condemns the person for not having enough faith to receive. 
So here's somebody that comes to them with a sickness, and they don't get healed right away, and they condemn the person for not having enough faith to receive. I know of another ministry that if you go to their ministers for 30 days, and they pray for that person for 30 days, and they don't get healed, they throw the minister away. They say the minister isn't valid. They're not worthwhile. They're not doing it right. So they just get rid of the minister. <laughs> okay, look, let's just get this out of the road. If somebody's not healed, whose fault is it? Yes. Okay? Getting into condemnation, is that going to help? No. Condemning others, is that going to help? No. no. What's the issue? Just keep after it. If nothing else, diligence, perseverance. I'm going to keep after this thing. Your walk, your walk is what's important. How about this problem? I'm not good enough to be used of God. I hear this all the time. I hear this all the time. Oh, I'm just not good enough. This isn't about how good you are. You can't be good enough. If you're trying to do this on your works to make you good enough for God to heal through you, rots a ruck on that one. It isn't how it works. You're not going to be good enough. It's about how good he is, not about how good you are. It's about what he wants to do through you. Okay, Will you ever be perfect enough to be used of God? You are perfect enough to be used of God because in your spirit you are absolutely and totally perfect. What does God want to do? He wants to touch others. The issue has been and always will be how much he loves. Huh? Mm-hmm. He loves people. So he'll use a donkey to talk to them. And I don't mind being the donkey he uses. Here's another problem. Well, I don't want to look like a fool. I don't want to be embarrassed. Well, what about just laying down your soul and loving that person? What about actually just loving them? See, it's not about you. It's about them. I don't want to be embarrassed, so I'm going to let them go through suffering. Compassion, overwhelming prestige. When your love for them is what drives you, it won't matter. It will overwhelm your need to look good. That's, boy, that's nothing about it. It's not there. Um, how about the question, well, what is Jesus feeling about him? Okay. Which brings me to this one. I'm afraid to step out. Oh, fear? Is fear going to stop us from... Well, fear is mostly the reason why we don't heal. We don't step out. Wow, this is the big problem. Fear is your faith turned bad. Fear is your faith. Now, your faith is supposed to be causing things to happen, but instead your fear is what's causing things to happen. Okay, you're causing these things to happen. You will never step out if you have fear. You'll never step out to lay hands on anybody. You'll not bring the healing. So what's the message you're receiving behind it? What's the message? What fear of death do you have? Okay, I'm afraid that, my, that everybody's going to think I'm a weirdo. Well, listen, being a weirdo is not all that bad. Coming from somebody who knows... We have a lot of fun. Weirdo ain't bad. Weirdo's just different. Listen, it's okay. Who's going to think you're a weirdo when the person is healed? They're not worried about you. All of a sudden, they're this, you know, this guy, you know, Peter and John come up to this guy. He's been at the temple gate called Beautiful for all these years. How many times did Jesus walk by that gate? But he was not healed because Jesus didn't heal him. So he's still sitting there. How many people were still needed to be healed in Israel? A pile. Okay? And so he walks up and he says, oh, alms for the poor, alms for the poor. And he looked at, at Peter, and Peter looked at him. Uh, see, if you've ever been in a country where there are people who beg, they tell you, don't look at them. Because once you look at them, they double their efforts. And then they call in their friends, and you are swarmed. If you actually give to them, you are inundated. Because everybody wants their fair share. Okay? So Peter stopped and looked at him. And he looked at him, and he says, 
He looked like, he says, look at me. He had anticipation of getting something. Hey, yeah, I wasn't going to have it like this. And Peter says, well, I don't have any silver or gold, but what I do have that has been freely given to me, I freely give. What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And grabbed his hand and pulled him up to his feet. As he stood up, his strength went into his ankles, and he was absolutely and totally able, after all those years of muscle, muscle attrition and everything else, you got to understand, he had no strength to do it. He was also damaged. Everything, everything was healed, and it was as there was no problem in time. His muscles were actually brought back into place and were strong. Tendons, muscles, ligaments, size, everything was right there. Done. Miraculous Rec recreative miracle right there on the spot. And what happened? He stood up and he says he was dancing and leaping and praising God. Now, if he hadn't been on those for, what, let's say, a year. Let's just say it was a year. He still couldn't dance. He couldn't leap. He couldn't jump. He'd just barely be able to stand. Unless there's a miracle involved. Man, this is too... He was jumping and leaping and praising God, accompanying them into the temple. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, I'll give you. Fear, shame, guilt, and blame. All these come to bear and all these things that, that we have to deal with. You go to lay hands on somebody and then you get a bad thought. See, and the enemy says, see, some, some minister you are. Are you ready for the warfare? Oh yeah, it comes with it. Deal with your fear so you can help others. You've got to deal with your fear. This is why we have been, been dealing with fear. Remember we taught on fear once? Remember that one? Hmm? You've got to get rid of your fear. Fear is what's killing you. You've got to get rid of your fear. How about praying for boldness? Now this is absolutely fascinating because the first, man, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happens and they go out and they win 3,000 to Jesus. Just like that. Then they get under a little bit of persecution. And they get flogged and everything else. And what do they pray then? They go back and they don't pray, Oh, God, protect us from being flogged. They said, Man, it was an honor to have been flogged. It says, Now, Lord, give us boldness. We've got to go out. And they said, Don't you ever preach in the name of Jesus again. And they went, Yeah, right. And they went right out and preached. But what did they pray for? Boldness. What do we need to pray for? Boldness. Okay? What is Jesus feeling about the people that are out there? What is he feeling about them? It's got to be real that we get this because Jesus is doing it. What does Jesus want to do? Now, this brings us to a big point. Is if you can't hear the voice of Jesus, you've got a problem. That means there's a block in you that needs to be dealt with so you can hear the voice of Jesus. And I don't know how many times people said, I've never heard his voice. And within seconds after that, they're hearing Jesus telling them stuff. Just absolutely amazes me. And I said, I thought you said you couldn't hear from Jesus. Well, now what? <laughs> of course you can. My sheep hear my voice. Matthew 4, 23 says this. And Jesus went around all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every sickness among the people. Okay. Wow. That's what's available. He was declaring it. He was demonstrating it. He says, hey, it's at hand. It's right here. Here's the gospel of the kingdom. The good news is the kingdom has something for you. And he's healing every disease and every sickness among the people. Everything. How big? Why? Because he was loving the people. As long as you're concerned about you, you'll never lay hands on somebody else. If you're concerned about them, it's amazing what God can do through you. Luke eleven two 2 says, And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is amazing. Do you really want to be praying this? Because if you say, let your kingdom come, I'm not praying, oh Lord, let your kingdom come on Alyssa. <laughs> what am I asking? Let your kingdom come right here. Right now. Right now. 
so that the same will that is being accomplished in heaven will be accomplished on earth. This means I'm going to have to find out what his will is, bringing the will of God to the earth. What is his will? What does he want? Now you're going to know. The kingdom coming here. You see, I can't, it's something that I can't make that decision for anybody else. You, you want the kingdom of heaven to be operating through you. Then when you pray that, Lord, may your kingdom come. I want your will to be done. Why? That means you're asking, Lord, show me your will, and then I'm going to obediently walk it out, and it's going to happen because I'm going to bring the kingdom to somebody else. What is his will for healing? If you don't know, it's not about being preached it by somebody else. Kevin, or, uh, Kenneth Copeland says, every, every time, it's always God's will to heal. That's nice. That's Kenneth Copeland. How nice. That's not Lietti. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by a specific spoken until Lietti hears from God that every disease is to be healed. And then I don't have the faith to handle every disease. But let me just break it down and make it easier for you. I don't need to know if God wants to heal every disease. All I need to know is this person I'm standing in front of right now, Lord, do you want to heal this one? Make it specific. Bring it down to the absolute right now. Lord, do you want to heal this one right now? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by a specific, specific spoken from God. Now he's going to say, yes, I want, this one, I want this one healed. What is your will right now, Lord? Boy, there's something really powerful about hearing God say, I want to heal them right now. Okay, I'm in. Ha ha. We've got to bring heaven to earth. So here's what needs to be determined. Here's what you need to determine. Okay, I'll put it this way. Each one of us needs to determine these certain things. Can you hear the voice of God? Can you hear the voice of God on a specific basis, not about all sorts of other wild theology about right now to this person? Can you hear the voice of God? You're going to have to determine this. Will you be de- be obedient. Now, you're going to have to make that decision before you start. You can't make that decision at the time because you'll always talk yourself out of it at the time. Okay? You can't make this decision before you start doing anything. You're going to have to determine, is it God's will to heal people? I can preach it all I want, every day, day in and day out, and will that affect you? You're going to have to hear it from Him alone. Is it God's will to heal, heal people? Specifically, is it God's will, will to heal this one? No pressure. It's right on the spot. What are you going to do? Now, how is this? Here's what you're going to have to determine. You're going to have to determine how God wants to do this through you. You have to determine how is this to be done. Now you're going to find out. You are also going to have to determine in advance, does he love me? Because you're going to get in the middle of all this and you're going to get plagued with all sorts of warfare that's going to make you look like you are stupid, bad news, junk crud, God doesn't love you, you should be thrown into hell, everything else you're going to hear. You better determine at the very beginning, does God love you? You're going to have to get that thing dealt with right there. And you're going to have to determine... Does he love them? It's quite a, quite a lo- grocery list here, isn't it? This is a lot to determine. But we're going to pursue the kingdom here. That's, that's my determination, is that we're going to have to pursue the kingdom. Now, we know more about the kingdom of heaven than, than anybody else I know. We know how it works. We know that the kingdom of heaven is all that stuff in the spirit realm, but we have five senses that help us to understand what's happening in the spirit realm. We also have three and a third dimensions, or four, depending on how you want to count it, that we're learning to operate in. 
But we also know that we've got to deal with the stuff that's in the soul realm to get the things of the spirit realm to function. God wants you clearer and cleaner through your heart than ever before so that he can bring this obedience out into somebody else. Now, I want everybody to look at your right hand. Okay? What would happen if you laid that hand on somebody? Can you bring the kingdom through your hand to them? This is the hand, that one that you're looking at right there. That's the hand that God is going to use to do it. Not mine. He's going to use mine too. But it's yours that he's going to use. Do you have to lay hands on people? Not always. But often. Fact is, most of the time. Always? There's no such thing as always. God has a nice ways of just changing stuff around, man. It just gets... You're going to anoint people with oil? Sometimes. Always? You don't always have oil with you. Except that 10W30 that Jim talks about in his car all the time. And just like... Okay. That's probably one of the shortest messages you've heard. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to release you today. Already. To start. You want to know what I, my goal is? You want to know where my goal is? My goal is to have no more glasses in this church. Amen. That's a goal of mine. All the people that wear glasses go, well, that's cool. Yes. And everybody, there's some that are emotionally responding right now. Okay, me, me. Okay. If you really do want to not have glasses... And you really want your eyesight healed? Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Go plant the seed of healing of eyes and eyesight in somebody else. Not in you yet. Plant it. Plant it first and see what happens. That's my goal is to see everybody, where everybody comes in the door here, we have the healing thing about getting people set free from glasses you say did you hear that one from Jesus actually did why because there will be a time very soon when we're not going to have access to optometrists what happens if you're on the run from persecution of Christians and you break your glasses Running into trees is not a good idea. We're going to... Listen, this is a reality. We're going to see knees healed in here. We're going to see backs healed in here. We're going to see arthritis chased away. We're going to see diabetes gone. What if you can't get close to your insulin? No sense for us having cancer because cancer is just absolutely not of God. Anybody listening? Anybody in agreement? Okay, well, I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to play a little bit before lunch. Father God, I do thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. And here, Lord, we are, call, we are responding to the call to be the ones to bring healing to others. But Lord, that means we're going to have to plant some seed. We're going to have to want to be the one who's obedient to send it to somebody, to bring it to others, to step out in boldness and do it. Lord, we're going to have to hear from you. So Lord God, I thank you for what you're doing. We know that we will eventually walk in all the obedience you have for us and we just give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So here's what I want you to do. Sit there very still and quiet. Hear from God. If he tells you that there's somebody in this room that you need to go lay hands on and pray for, then you go do it. Is it just about glasses? It's not even about glasses at all yet. It's about whatever the Lord brings to you to bring to them. Here's the deal. 
If you thought, as soon as we started talking about healing, that you're the one that needs somebody to lay hands on you, then I'm going to tell you today, the Lord is telling you to plant the seed and go lay hands on somebody else. It's not about you. It's about you becoming the channel because water pipes get wet. That we know. Go bless somebody else. Thank you, Lord. Speak to your people, and we will give you the glory. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen.